Welcome to the Health Fix Podcast, where health junkies get their weekly fix of tips, tools, and techniques to have limitless energy, sharp minds, and fit physiques for life. Hey, health junkies, on this episode of the Health Fix Podcast, you get me, Dr. Janine Krause. I'm going to be talking about my experience with bioidentical hormones in myself, but also in my patients. I realized I haven't been as outspoken as I probably should be since a lot of people are asking questions here in this realm. And as the celebrities start to go through perimenopause and menopause, we're starting to hear all these stories. And a lot of folks are asking me, well, well, what do you do, doc? Because, well, let's face it, I'm a naturopathic doctor. So you wouldn't think that I am doing much in the hormone space. But I actually am doing a lot. It's one of my favorite things to work on. And so today I want to kind of give you a little insight into my background here and how I'm helping my clients in hopes that maybe I could give you a little inspiration. So back when I was 26 years old, my mom passed. And in the 10 years leading up to that, I watched her die a very slow death from breast cancer. 10 years, 10 remissions, and a whole lot of chemo in between. Now, at 26, you're not really thinking about getting older. You know, I would have thought that my age now at 46 was old <laughs> back then. And granted, I was in naturopathic school then. And, and really, you know, I was deep into herbs. I was deep into food medicine. I was deep into acupuncture, which are all incredibly useful tools, food at the foundation of everything. But I realized that we do need some higher level interventions as we get older. And while I had high hopes that just eating certain foods to help certain energetics in the body would help my my yin and yang, right, to be able to help me age better, I realized that, you know, we have some modern medicine breakthroughs that are incredibly useful. And there are ways to microdose them. There are ways to mix and match with herbs and hormones. And I've been kind of figuring that out for the last 17 plus years. So at first, I'll be honest, at at Best Year, we didn't talk a lot about bioidentical hormones. We kind of dabbled in it, but it wasn't something that was a full on course. You had to go to extra training to learn about it. And I definitely did it because I saw that people are getting better when they have some bioidentical hormones on board. And I'm talking, this was when I was in school. So this is 20 years ago. And here we are now just talking about it. What? Yeah, I know. Um, Things have come a long way though. I I will give you that. So having my mom die at 26 and my aunt die three months later, both with estrogen positive cancers, both breast cancers. My aunt had a variation of a breast cancer come back as a colon tumor and they had figured that out, but both were estrogen positive. Of course, in my mind, I was like, I'm never doing hormones. This terrifies me. This is scary. I have actually never taken birth control myself because of that fear. But getting into my 40s, I started to realize how much my patients were benefiting. And I was like, hmm, maybe I could look into this. Now, I also started to prescribe bioidentical hormones based off of my training from from the likes of Dr. Pamela Warshin smith She's been on the podcast like three times. She is my guru. She is my master <laughs> um, teacher in that department. And, you know, I've taken a lot of different courses, but I've also learned a lot from my local compounding pharmacy. Um, the gal owner over there, Kim and Gina, those two are like my my muses when it comes to working with hormones because they've had the pharmaceutical side of the training. So for those of you who are listening right now and you're like, I don't know a doc that can help me. I don't really know what direction to go. Find a compounding pharmacy near you that compounds hormones. You will find a plethora of information right inside those doors. And and I really took advantage of that, started to going to some of the conferences for the compounding pharmacies. And that's where I learned a majority of my information on how to compound, how to help folks with micro doses, not these super physiologic doses of hormones that I'm seeing given to women on these corner hormone clinics. Men too, like men are not immune from this either. It's kind of crazy. I'm the person people see when hormones go south. So say you went to a clinic that's prescribing 10 times the amount of hormones that you ever had in your body to begin with. Let's think about this here. When you go into menopause or even perimenopause or men andropause, you don't suddenly need 10 times the amount of hormones that you had before. 
Your body wants what it had before because that's what it could handle. And if you had trouble with your hormones before, now you want to dial stuff in, not just throw more hormones at it. It's not like your magic predisposition to heavy periods and painful cramps just magically goes away because you're in menopause or it magically goes away because you've had a hysterectomy. That's not the case. You keep how you metabolize your hormones along with you. You want to be thinking about this, and a lot of folks aren't. I thought about it to an extent to I really started taking trainings by different companies that, that offer the testing, like the Dutch test. And yes, you can say that their, their education is biased because the Dutch test does sell a dried urine test to metabolize hormones. But it makes sense. Let's think of it here. I have two relatives, my mom being a first you know, generation relative that died of an estrogen positive breast cancer. Now, I didn't have any genetic mutations at all, but we are talking about an estrogen positive cancer. Of course, I'm like, I don't want any estrogen in my body. In fact, I spent a lot of my time trying to detox it out because I learned about that in an, in an early stage in Bastyr. But what I didn't understand is that these Dutch tests, these dried urine tests, are actually able to tell us how you break down your hormones through your liver and through your cells. How cool is that? This is incredible information to help prevent cancer. Not only from what the Women's Health Initiative lied to us about, that we get cancer from bioidentical hormones, which is so not true. Not true. Baby boomers should be pissed. They should be pissed because they were lied to about all of these things that could actually help their health and help them age better. That sucks. But here we are now. We can go back. We can work on things. But the big thing that I want you to take away from this podcast, if you take away nothing else, is that you can support your hormones in many different ways and there's no one size fits all situation. Yes, pharmaceutical companies give you patches that you know, there are patches that they that are available that we can prescribe that have certain dosages there are progesterone capsules in certain dosages there's testosterone in certain dosages but you can adjust all of that and sync it with what your body is used to not these super physiologic doses so that you get side effects now have i ever seen someone directly correlate having taken bioidentical hormones to cancer no Have I had patients in my practice get cancer while on bioidentical hormones? Yes. What do I conclude in that case? Well, after a lot of soul searching, when the first one happened to me, let's put it that way, it didn't even happen to me. That's such not a good um, statement. When it happened in my practice, I was terrified. I was like, oh my gosh, I caused this person, I caused this person cancer. Right? I, I took it on myself and thought, oh my gosh, the bioidentical hormones did it. I, I by prescribing them, we're, we're giving her this. This is not the case. If we look at what's going on in the history of that patient, she was a heavy drinker. She was doing a lot of eating of processed foods. Is it her fault? No, it's society. That's what we do, right? We, we Convenience foods are a thing. Alcohol is a thing for coping. So there are a lot of factors we want to be thinking about when we're using hormones. Because can hormones give fuel to the cells to to get backed up and then have us potentially develop cancer? Maybe. But what the Women's Health Initiative said is like the hormone replacement therapy directly caused cancer. No, I think there's a lot of factors involved in how cancer truly develops from mindset to toxins in the food and environment, things we can't even control, lots of things. So we need to get out ahead of that not deny ourselves the ability of using hormones if they are going to help us feel better. Now, have I had some people in my practice that we've tried microdoses, we've tried different herbs, things in that nature, and nothing really seemed to work? Yes, that happens in some cases, especially when someone's body is incredibly stressed. They've been on a, under a lot of stress for multiple reasons in their life. Potentially even supplements are seen as a threat by by their really heightened sense of of threat in their nervous system. These are the cases in which I see hormones not doing well. And we can identify that and we can work on that and help the nervous system feel safe to be able to tolerate a little bit of what could help it get back into balance. You see, when someone's nervous system is out of balance, it feels like everything is a threat. Food, 
people, air, water. I mean, there are so many people I see in my practice that are like, I think everything is against me. And it very well could be if your mindset's that way. But also, there are a lot of cases in which the nervous system really will fight back on things. So if that is you or you have heard about that from other people, that is true. But you can do something about that. You can work to feel safe in your body again before you add in all kinds of interventions. That's one of the things that I am doing in my programs with with my patients. It'll be one of the hallmarks of my concierge program coming out later this summer. So the need to prime your body to tolerate hormones is something that I find incredibly important and in being overlooked, especially in the clinics, the hormone clinics on the corner that are giving out the high dosages of hormones. We need to know first how you metabolize hormones before we start giving you them. We need to make sure that your lymphatic system, your liver, your kidneys, your cells are working well. Because if we throw stuff into a system that's not optimized, things can break. Now, I totally understand that a lot of people come to me and they're desperate. They have wicked hot flashes at night where they're not sleeping all night. They're incredibly fatigued. Their brain fog is so strong that they can't seem to think one thought to the next. And people are looking at them and they're like, what is wrong with you? And they're relying on their brain for their work. I mean, we are at one of the the first generations where women are full time in the workplace at high positions. And they're going through menopause and perimenopause. Of course they need these things to be able to keep going. I've heard so many women have quit their jobs because of the perimenopause and menopause symptoms that interfere with their health. That's not cool. We want women to stay in the workplace if they want to. We want women to do whatever they want. We want women to achieve their dreams. And so this is important. The woman entrepreneur can benefit from hormones. This is something that we need to be thinking about. Now, Now, am I saying that every single person, blanket statement, everyone needs hormones? No, some people can keep making their own. As they get older, they don't even need support. This is another reason to test hormones too. And this is another reason to use microdosing and, and cycling it. So priming your body for hormones should be step one before the hormones go on board. Now, do I prime and put a little hormones in? Yes, sometimes, especially if symptoms are very intense. What I'm hoping for in the future of of medicine for women and men is that we are priming the body to get older and we are priming the body for the hormones and replacing as we get older versus like, oh crap, I can't sleep through the night. My brain is like shot. I can't remember anything. And I've got hot flashes all day, all night, right? Like, let's not get to that point. Unfortunately, we are getting to that point and that's where women are deciding like, okay, I'm gonna try these these what we've considered poison hormones um, because I am at my wit's end. That sucks. I don't want people to get to that position. And I'll be honest, like up until probably 10 years ago, I was a little afraid of hormones too. I really didn't know what to think. We hadn't been taught accurately. And we also always had that women's health initiative study in the back of our mind. Always. It was like hammered in, even in naturopathic medicine school. It's crazy. Now, of course, in naturopathic medicine school, we talked about herbs. We talked about helping women with herbs and and supporting. And herbs are wonderful for helping to counter a lot of the symptoms that come with perimenopause and menopause. But sometimes there comes a point at which the herbs are not strong enough. And this is where I will blend protocols. For many women, I'm seeing as I've been in the practice longer, symptoms of perimenopause are getting a lot worse. Are we getting sicker as a society? Yes. Are we having more imbalances? Yes. But I also think the the overarching theme here is stress. Women in perimenopause are now needing hormones to help counter some of their symptoms because stress is so high up here and we're depleting our hormones rapidly. So yes, I use bioidentical hormones on a cycling basis in women that still get their period. For many doctors right now, That is gonna be a cringe and oh my gosh, she is endangering people. I know that, that that's gonna be scary for a lot of people. I'm not endangering anyone. We are doing all the testing, all the checks and balances and we're also working on diet. Every single person that works with me with hormones knows what we're getting into, right? We know what we're up to. 
we're working to optimize things. Because when the hormones get into the system at the right dose for you and you feel good, you feel amazing. And this is why I don't want to keep my mouth shut anymore about what I'm doing. Because so many people can get their lives back, their energy back, their sleep back, their vitality. And if we catch it early enough, we can also work on fine lines and wrinkles using Estriol cream. The same cream that's on the face can go down below for the vaginal tissue. It's all the same skin. If your skin's wrinkling on the face, you better believe it's wrinkling down below. So there are so many things out there that can be of benefit and and we are not talking about it as extensively as we can when it comes to customizing. Now we're talking like, yes, there's patches out there. Yes, there are pellets for replacing hormone therapy. Um, I said that's so weird. Hormone replacement therapy pellets, BioT. Now there's also injections, there's drops, there's sublinguals, there's trochies, there's films, there's creams. There are so many different things in terms of options for delivery of the hormones to the body. There's a lot of argument in terms of what is the most stable form of the bioidentical hormones. In my mind, it's the the one that someone's going to use, but it's also the one that someone has really primed themselves to be able to use. A lot of people ask me, why do you not insert pellets? One, I haven't done training yet and I will, but two, it's because it's harder to get the right dosage leading up to pellets. So the idea is once you know what your dosage is that your body tolerates, then pellets are a good idea, at least in my opinion. I know a lot of people are going to argue that. Some people's lives have been changed by having the pellets right off the bat. Other people, the pellets, you know, don't go so well. And here's the thing with the pellets, they're inserted, right? So if the dosage is too high, you don't feel good on them, you have to kind of wait for them to ride out. I had a little trauma back (laughs) in the day with different patients using Depo-Provera and different things like that where it took months to wear off. And it's it's something that let's put it this way it's it's something that you don't want to take lightly but i do think pellets can be incredibly helpful now other hormones that like forms that are stable would be capsules of progesterone i've seen that to be more stable for helping with the uterine lining compared to progesterone cream we used to think progesterone cream was the the standard for helping to prevent overgrowth of the uterine lining because you wanna, if you have a uterus and you're gonna use hormones, you have to have progesterone and estrogen. You have to have them for protection because the progesterone protects from the uterine lining from getting too thick. And the, the capsules did a lot better than the cream in terms of the data that I've seen now because there's been a long enough time frame to use it. Now, are we going to find over time that there's different tweaks and different things that are better than others? Absolutely, absolutely. But this is why being open to trying different formats can be incredibly helpful. I have some patients, you know, years ago we were told that any oral estrogen was, even if it was bioidentical, would be harmful um, and, and more of a risk for, for cancer. Now we're finding that bioidentical estradiols on a film kind of like something you suck on, like those mints that you used to get with the little strips and you put it in your mouth and it just dissolves. Using things like that can be a more of a stable dosing amount for folks. And it does seem scary to me to use oral estrogens after all these years of being told that it was not the optimal way to go. Here's the thing, one day at a time with this stuff and monitoring, we have to monitor. And underlying everything is watching someone's habits, right? How much alcohol are you drinking? What are you doing with your diet? Because these things do impact what happens with your hormones. How's your gut microbiome? We can reabsorb estrogens through our gut lining using something called beta-glucuronidase. We wanna know those levels. So these are all incredible pieces to the puzzle that you want to have known before you jump into the hormones because I'll be honest, I'm not going to just willy-nilly work with folks. I want to know your background. And so this is something to be thinking about when you're looking at adding in bioidentical hormones. Now with this, not it's not a one-size-fits-all situation. It's incredibly not a one-size-fits-all situation. I will often be known to take patches and cut them in half or cut them in a third to help women 
versus using full dose patches. I will also compound capsule amounts of progesterone to have a specific amount that works for them because too much progesterone can cause you to feel puffy and have acne and not feel so great. So you want to be thinking about how all of these things are able to be customized. You can blend, as I mentioned before, say you don't want any bioidentical estrogen. You can use a little red clover and pair that with a bioidentical progesterone capsule. There's lots of different ways to do this. Now, some people don't tolerate progesterone for one reason or other when it comes to detoxing it. So we use evening primrose oil and then we can use red clover or we can use black cohosh or we can use Siberian rhubarb, whatever it may be to help balance these, these hormones. Now, one of the things I think that is really important to mention right now, because a lot of people I still find getting confused as to what is natural hormone replacement therapy versus bioidentical versus synthetic. Synthetic is going to be coming from your regular pharmacy. Those are going to be your estrace creams, things of that nature. Estradiol patches, like the Vivelle Dot, things of that nature, those are bioidentical, but they are still synthetic. Bioidentical means it looks like your hormones in your body, but they are still made synthetically in a lab. At the compounding pharmacy, you're also getting bioidentical synthetics. They work better because they look like the hormones in your body. They also are useful because compounding pharmacies can make things in different variations and customize it for you, which is what I love about compounding pharmacies. Now, the other side of this is natural hormones. These are wild yam derived creams and things of that nature. If you've heard of the naturopath Barbara O'Neill, this is what she's talking about wild yam creams. They can be incredibly helpful as well. What the harder part with some of the natural ones is that we don't have an official, like, let's say it's harder to dial them in exactly, even though there are certain amounts of that wild yam in the cream. We, it's, it's just not a standardized dosage in some of them. Now I, and I misspoke a little bit because there are some products endorsed by Barbara O'Neill that are standardized in terms of amounts. But if you have something that just says wild yam cream, but it doesn't give you a milligram dosage, you are getting something that is a natural hormone cream, but there is not a standardized dosage. So you don't know how much you're actually getting in that. So let me make that be very clear as, as to what's going on there. Now, I use certain ones of, of the natural wild yam creams that are standardized, and it's great. A lot of people benefit from that. A lot of people benefit from creams of herbs that are are women, like basically geared towards women's health, but basically geared, what am I trying to say here? Geared towards the hormone support herbally, but it's in the form of a cream. And there are some that are amazing that can work there. There's a lot of different options out there. And you've probably seen this if you've been looking in, in the space and you might be feeling like, oh my gosh, where do I start? Where do I go? This is where I help people figuring out which direction is going to be best for you because there's a couple of things to think about. Severity of your symptoms, what you've tried before, what your diet and lifestyle is like, and being really honest with yourself. If you're too busy to cook all the time, okay, we, you're going to have some exposures more than someone that's cooking their own food and growing their own food at their home. We just got to think about exposure level and we got to think about like what is your body dealing with on a 24-7 basis because stress that will interfere with how you metabolize your hormones too. Methylation defects, so how you detox just in general through your cells, big deal. What's going on in your sulfur pathways in your liver, these are incredibly important too. Knowing all this information will set you up to, to really have an understanding of what's best to start with. And when I work with folks, I'm always going to start at the minimal dose possible to get effect. I'm not starting at high and then trying to come down. That is side effect city. Because a lot of times with hormones, sometimes you could start hormones and have worsening of symptoms if the dose is too high. That's not good. Or your symptoms just stay the same, right? So this is, this is a big deal. Now, one of the other big things I want to dispel in terms of the myths that a lot of people are putting out on social media, you can get on your estrogen and your weight just drops off. I wish that was really the case. And I would love to meet these people that are talking about it because the truth is it takes time. It doesn't just fall off. You, When you get things balanced, things can stabilize. 
and weight can come off, especially if you're kind of like that five or 10 pound weight gain around perimenopause and menopause kind of person. But if you're looking at 30, 50, 100 pounds of weight, that's not the case with hormones. It's not going to drop off like that. Ultimately, the more weight that you have on your body, the more fat that you have on your body, the more that you have hormone stores that need need addressing before trying to start a super physiologic dose of bioidentical hormones. So there's a lot to think about here, but I really wanted to talk about the fact that all of this can be optimized and that it does work. It really does work. And not everybody that's used bioidentical (laughs) hormones has ended up with cancer. So this is another really big thing to think about. And on top of all of it, the most important thing is to think about priming yourself for using, using hormones versus just jumping right in. And this is why the younger generation, folks who are in perimenopause, it's a great time for all of you to be working on getting your health dialed in so that as your hormones start to decline, if they do, because like I said before, some people's hormones don't, you can definitely keep your hormones going a long time. That is a real deal thing. Um, some people do it. Is, is, is it the common? No, it's not. But I do have some folks that are keeping their hormones going naturally really nicely. So it's something to think about. It takes a lot of discipline there. And especially if you're an entrepreneur, you're a high level you know, executive, things of that nature, or you're just momming really hard and grandmoming really hard, you know, it, the, the amount of stress in your life really does matter in terms of how well, you're going to be able to continue to make hormones as you get older. And so having a little support can be incredible, especially for helping the concentration, the focus, the energy, and just feeling more stable with moods. I mean, yes, hot flashes, it helps with that sleep. Incredible too. Those are kind of the big biggies there to think about in this department. And um, I can say it's quite helpful. So what am I up to in this department? I am working with women one-on-one with their hormones. I'm not doing group programs. I'm I'm more of a concierge type of, of doc, meaning we work together, we troubleshoot your hormones, we figure out what you need to be ready to start hormones or what we need to help you tolerate the hormones that you are already taking. So maybe you come to me with hormones. Maybe you have tried multiple different things and you're not adjusting well. We're going to go back to the basics. We're going to see what is going on with how you break down your hormones. What is going on with all your lymphatic pathways, your kidney, your liver, your colon, your microbiome, everything head to toe. Now you might be thinking, gosh, this sounds expensive. There's going to be a lot of testing. No, that's not the case. Really what we're looking at here is assessing what's going on. The more someone can track their cycles if they have periods, and the more you can just track throughout the month if you don't have a period, just to see what shows up for you and how it shows up possibly cyclically. Because us women, we will cycle even after our period is done. So information to keep on hand, and this is great stuff to bring into me. I'm going to look at that anyway. And so looking at all those things, looking at your fitness, you know, I don't want people to think that they have to be like athletes to work with me it's more just making sure that you've got some form of movement going now is that a prerequisite to coming to me no we can work on that but the idea is there's going to be some talk about that there's going to be talk about mindset there's going to be talk about brain function lots of cognitive stuff plays in here when it comes to hormones and getting older and so I aim for a total body approach to hormones, not just give you the hormones and hope things work. We're looking at all of your body pathways to make sure we're priming you for replacement therapy and priming you for optimization, whether it be for the mind, whether it be for sexual health, whether it be for energy, whatever it may be, that's what we're going for in that department. So that's kind of a little rundown of how I work with folks on a one-on-one basis. And if you have more information or you want more information, by all means, head over to my website at drjkrausnd.com. Click on a chat with me. I do charge for my calls, but that can be rolled into a program with me should you choose to work with me. Those calls are very useful for the folks that jump on them because you're going to get some answers, you're going to get some direction, and I'll give you 
it straight in terms of what I think and and what I would do if I were working with you and next steps. So either way, if we don't choose to work together, you're still going to leave that call with clarity and ideas as to next steps for you to help in your journey of aging well. So that is my scoop on how I'm using bioidentical hormones and hormone optimization in my practice and in my one-on-one concierge groups or not groups, concierge programs. And so nevertheless, if you're interested, hit me up at drjcrossnd.com. You can even send me a message and we'll chat. And if you'd like to talk further, I also have those chats available. All right. You have survived another episode of the Health Fix podcast. I hope you have a great day, whatever you're doing. And stay tuned for more of these Wednesdays where I weigh in on the podcast that we've had for the week or the topic of the week. All right. Take care. Hey, Health Junkies. Thank you so much for listening to another episode of the Health Fix podcast. To help support my mission to bring you tips, tricks, and tools to help you optimize your health, I'd be grateful if you'd like, subscribe, and write me a review for the podcast. And if you hear a product you're interested in on the podcast, you can now go over to my website to learn more. That's doctor spelled out, J-K-R-A-U-S-E, nd.com. Just click on shop and you'll find all the information on my favorite products that I stand behind and use myself. All affiliate income earned with your purchases goes directly to help support the production of the podcast so I can keep bringing you quality health information. I appreciate your support and I'm honored to have you listening to my podcast as a fellow health junkie. Thanks again. Hey, fellow health junkie, thanks for listening to the Health Fix podcast. If you enjoyed tuning in, please help support me to get the word out about the podcast. Subscribe, rate, and review, and just get that word out. Thanks again for listening.